Our guest today is one of Britain's best loved and well respected mediums, Tony Stockwell. Hi Tony. Hello there. Yeah, Lovely okay. to meet you again. Nice to see you again. Now, we film here my programmes uh -huh. at the Orwell Hotel in Felixstowe, but you're going to be working in a bit after this. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. It's got a demonstration. Uh -huh. Um, so, like any demonstration really, it's, I think it's a couple of hundred people downstairs potentially. So um, I should go along and do my best. Yep. That's all I how, can do. how do you prepare for an event? Um, it, it depends really on, on my state of mind. If I'm particularly relaxed that day, I don't need much of my preparation other than maybe five minutes on my own yeah. to be aware of kind of the, the space either side of me which sounds strange yeah. but I become more aware of, of that space because that's where I'll feel people from the spirit will come and stand either to my left or my right uh -huh. um, if I've had a particularly stressful day or an incredibly long journey I might take 20 minutes mm -hmm. um, to sit with my eyes closed sometimes hum along or sing a song I do anything <laughs> that kind of gets me into me rather yeah. than having to worry about what's going on, on the outside so right. it depends on the day okay now most people will recognise you from the television, big theatres around the country, or your books. Mm. But you do work damned hard in between, don't you? Yeah. Well, I think the public don't realise you do smaller events. Yeah, uh, lots of um, I still do lots of spiritualist churches as well because uh, I'm still very much a spiritualist and uh, uh, I owe a lot to spiritualism. You know, from my first beginnings. Um, so I was only 16 when I first went to a spiritualist church and they gave me so much encouragement and understanding yeah. and the philosophy behind the mediumship and I think that's something we lack massively now. People don't want to, in the main, put in kind of the probation or yeah. the service to uh, the churches and, and its foundation, which is fine because maybe yeah. it's, people come about things in a totally different way. but. For me it's still very important, so churches I still do, and I travel um, outside of the UK quite a lot now, so uh, that obviously takes time up. So you work in churches, we know about life after life, so ha has mediumship or clairvoyance got you onto a God link? Uh, have you looked into God at all? Yeah, yeah I, for me it's, it's fundamental, it's all the same, yeah. um, so I very much believe in God, I very much believe in that God, the Great Spirit, is a big part of who I am, but mm. it's it's not kind of like the God as other people see God. You know, the the Christian idea of a man looking over us, or it's not mm. that at all. It's it, it's, it's it's an energy. It is the universe. It's you. It's me. It's a power of love, and all of that might sound a bit naff to say it and a bit twee, but it's all of those things. Mm. So um, God is everything that is loving and good. So um, devotion to God is a huge part of, of, of what, what I'm about every day. So mm. um, I, I'm at times quite prayerful, but again, not in a religious way. And um, I, I sometimes will sing mantras or um, maybe do some chanting if that gets me into that space. Uh -huh. But um, once, you, once you actually start to experience the power that exists around us, it's immense, won't you? and it becomes quite addictive. Um, so it's not quite like meditation where people go into themselves and, and sometimes use music or visualization to get to a space where their mind can be clear. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually very energetic, very wonderful, and very powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's to sit in the awareness of the energy that's around us that, that kind of helps us to focus on who we are the greatest part of us, which is the spirit within. Mm. All of that's kind of like a bit lengthy, but um, it makes you feel fantastic. So do you meditate every day? Uh, no, I don't meditate as in sitting around and, and, and going to a meditation, but I do a lot of contemplation. So I could be driving right. the car yeah. and be aware. I could be walking the dogs and, and be in a diff different space. So it's, it, I guess it's all about entering into another uh, like, like consciousness, so we talk of aut altered states, uh, the altered states of consciousness, but you can do that, I mean I'm in an altered state of consciousness now just talking to you, mm -hmm. which effectively is almost like being normal, mm -hmm. but it's slightly removed from that because I'm experiencing a state of, of uh, kind of like a, a, a elation, but in a very controlled, 
happy way. Mm. And that's because I'm about to work, so I'm already experiencing the feelings of people from the other world gathering close really? to me. Mm. Mind you, having said that, <clears throat> I'm slightly removed from normality myself. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a nice place to be in at times. Not bad, yeah. It doesn't go down, down well sometimes, but yeah. uh, let's not go there. Tony, what does mediumship mean to you? Um, mediumship means to me um, the ability to link uh, my mind to the mind of those who have passed before us to interpret that information and then being able to put it in a language others understand and mm. speak my truth, you know. So the, the language of mediumship in itself is far more complicated than we recognise and yet it's also incredibly simple. Mm. Um, but learning to interpret the, the subtle feelings that the spirit world come in with to begin with and then trying to hone that so you know uh, who they are, who they are, were, uh, how they want to be perceived, what the, is their message that they, they wish to bring, what, what do they actually want to say. Um, so I do all of that in the service of those without voices, which is of course the spirit people, mm. and, and those people that are effectively sleepwalking, which is the people that live in this world. Oh and uh, I say sleepwalking, it's like they're, they're alive and aware, uh, and yet they're not aware of their own truth, their own power, their mm. own inheritance of the spirit, that they're going to move on from this world into the spirit world, that their mum still exists even though she's passed. Mm. And I do all of that stuff in the hope that I can pass on a message that effectively will liberate the living. Because the spirit know that they've gone, mm. and the spirit know they've been here. It's, it's for the living that we have to serve. Yeah. And it's also, I guess, giving those who have passed uh, another opportunity, another opportunity rather, to say, hello, I love you, it's me. Mm. And that in turn, you hope, has a, a massive, far-reaching effect on the living. Is it possible to improve one's own mediumship? Of course, absolutely. It improves all the time. Yeah. So uh, my old tutor once told me that uh, mediumship in itself is best demonstrated once it's been perfected, which is usually when somebody's in their 70s. So mediumship is usually at its height mm. uh, when somebody's in their 70s. If they've been working at it for a number of years, or maybe 30, 40 years, it'd mm. even be better. It matures with age for, like a good wine. Mm -hmm. um, and as long, and this may sound a little bit disrespectful to some, but as long as you can keep your mind, you know, as long as you don't end up with um, Alzheimer's, depression, uh, dementia, anything like that affects the, the mind, then you'll lose your mediumship. Mm. If your mind is clear, it, it gets better with age. Mm. And simply because uh, um, um, we talk of this language of mediumship, if I feel a man come close to me and uh, he was born in Venezuela and his wife was German and his kids were brought up in Poland, I might struggle with those geographical references when I was 20 because I've lived a life and potentially I may have been to those countries by then. Mm -hmm. I will know those crucial pieces of information mm -hmm. because it was once said by a, a medium called Gordon Higginson, who's a very famous medium who's now passed, that mediumship is the mirror of the mind. You have to kind of know it to be able to interpret it. Right. Yeah. And so that's why it gets better when you get older, because you have more, uh, more references. Yeah, um, more experience. More experiences and, yeah. to, to, to draw, draw upon. So if Tony Stockwell wasn't a medium, what would he be? I'd probably still be working in London, um, still working in accounts offices. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for quite a number of years for different shipping companies in their accounts offices doing foreign exchange and that kind of thing. And it's a job I enjoyed, you know, I was quite good at that, I'm quite good mm -hmm. at numbers and, and that kind of thing. So uh, I left there uh, um, really to pursue, uh, um, say, I, don't, I don't like the word a career, but um, certainly my vocation in working. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't had the vocation, then I no doubt would be working a nine to five up in town, up mm -hmm. off the, the embankment. And um, I'd be happy enough. It was yeah. a good job. It yep. was fine. Now, I met you once down at your studio in Brookford. Mm -hmm. How's it going down there? Yeah, really well. Yeah, busy. Really well, yeah. We have between um, 120 and 150 students a week. Mm. 
mm -hmm. uh, that go through depending on the term. Yeah. So that's with me and a medium called Lynn Probert, Natalie Walker, and on occasion Amanda Gray. So mm -hmm. between the four of us, plus guest speakers, we're very lucky to have Mavis Patilla, who visits us from, from Manchester, who's an amazing medium. Mm -hmm. um, so between us all, we, we tutor that many people per mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, and we can't do more than that, you know, we're, we're kind of bursting at the seams a little yeah. bit. So no, we're very happy there. We, we kind of thought about expanding and getting new premises and a new venue, but it's literally one big room and a small room above a wedding shop. It's very quiet, off the high street, and uh, it suits the purpose. Mm -hmm. You would never know you were up there, to be yeah. fair. You know, people on the outside don't know we're there. It's a little road, you know, a little a little door rather, just off, off mm -hmm. the pavement. And you walk in and it's like a like a little piece of heaven when you're up there, yeah. for me anyway. It's mm -hmm. full of spirit. Yeah. And um, it suits our purpose, certainly. But you get clients or are they called customers? Clients, pupils, uh, students, students, delegates, students. Yeah, maybe students as well. From all over the yeah. world. From well, this yeah. week we've had them from Dubai for readings. They've come from readings from me. Yeah. So they've been from Dubai, they've come from um, last week, someone from Brazil came in, all for one to ones. Yeah. Um, but for teaching, um, again, just this week we've had them from Paris, they came in, and uh, from Gibraltar as well. Yeah. But I teach quite a lot in Gibraltar anyway and demonstrate there so people come over for different classes mm. if they can. But I don't, I don't particularly like them coming a long way because it's a massive responsibility and the pressure's on. Yeah. If I'm doing a one to one and they've come from Kent or they've come from Sussex and it goes brilliantly well but if it kind of oh I think oh, it could have been better than that mm. they've got an hour to get home if they've come in from Dubai it, it's terrible lucky enough touch wood um, they've all been gone they've all gone really well, well when I came down it took me about 10 minutes because I used to live around the corner oh <laughs> really yeah well both been Essex. you're from Essex aren't you um, born in London born in London, London actually yeah born in London. London my family are Londoners oh, right. and um, then like most people from the East End that moved to Essex yeah Oh, so we're not actually Essex boys then together? No, no, you're born in London as well. Hornchurch. Hornchurch, oh yeah. yeah, okay. not yeah. Far. No, no. In your private life, do spirit catch you off guard? Or, 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 I mean, you work so often, can you shut down yourself? Yeah, or? yeah, you, you never shut down. The, the truth of it is that mediums never shut down or open up. Right. They will only ever shift their awareness. So um, my awareness could be going to Waitrose to do my shopping and then to walk the dogs, and I'm 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 within that space, concentrating. Um, I can choose to almost walk the middle path at times, and you know, do my shopping. I can yeah. take my mind somewhere else and still manage to successfully do the shop. Um, but when I want to demonstrate, I just simply shift my awareness pretty much from the physical into the spiritual world. And that ebbs and flows depending on the demonstration. If, you, if I can't hear my audience, they, they can't hear me. If I can't see them, they can't see me. If someone's particularly quiet, I'm having to bring myself back do you understand? Is it for you? Is this true? Madam, please speak to me. Then I'm having to come back into this world. Right. Um, if someone's very vocal and very happy with me, uh, then it, I, I'm able, you know, for a good few minutes at a time to be fully aware of what's going on here because I'm, I've got the stimulus of, oh my God, that's correct, I understand. Mm. Uh, a difficult person, of someone that's reticent, fearful, for whatever reason, they don't know it, but they draw the medium's mind back into the room. And right. you don't want to be in the room. No. You were, you're actually you're physically, but your mind needs to be here. Um, so, yeah, it's trying to educate your audience, really, uh, um, how, how to respond, I suppose. So you don't, like some mediums, you don't open up using chakras and closing no, no. down? You don't? No, no, no. no. No, not mm. at all. No, right. I was taught that way um, years ago, but it's never worked for me. Um, I, I like things to be dead simple. I'm here, I'm talking to you, and now I'm here, and I'm talking to them, and now I'm talking to you. Yeah. And it's literally, it's like almost like a valve, I suppose, of the mind. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it's a very simple thing. I think with mediumship, people try to make it far more complicated than it is. It's very easy. Mm. We have an awareness here, and we have an awareness here, and that's how I teach. All right. Mm. Well, I've taught something else tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I've taught, I've learned, I mean. You've learned, so. yeah, there you go. <laughs> how do you relax, Tony? Um, relax, um, when I'm not working, I'm, I'm usually at home. I've recently moved, so um, we're decorating the house. 
Um, my dad's a decorator, was only, he's recently retired in the last few years, so he's been around most days. Um, my sister and my dad really to decorate, so I've been enjoy enjoying that. Uh, I've got a little house um, in Grand Canaria, and I've been renovating that as well. Mm -hmm. So that's been trips out there and sourcing materials, which might sound quite mundane, but I quite like it. So it, it, it's, it's really a great distraction, you know, trying to get stuff for houses, I like mm. it. I should have been an estate agent. <laughs> I like houses, I like buildings, so that's, that's been good for me. I've got my dogs, um, so I, I'm forever with them over the field, uh, walking them, clipping them, working with them. Uh, and then just visiting my family, visiting my niece, she's nearly five. And um, so uh, I'm taking her to ballet and, mm. you know, getting her hair cut and stuff like that. So there's always plenty of family things to do. I don't really have time for a, a hobby as such mm. because when I was working in a regular job, spirit work was my passion, my hobby, my outlet. So I've been in a very fortunate position where I'm actually you know working within the thing that I like yeah. to do the most you know so it's almost like being a train spot and then somebody says you actually well, I'm gonna pay you to be a train spotter you'd be you know think it's the most amazing thing in the world so I'm very lucky that I can I live the passion now I've got to ask you when I met you last time you were thinking about buying a horse yeah it didn't happen. you didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen, unfortunately. I kind of thought, I, I was feeding horses yesterday and I went and bought some carrots for them. So um, where I live now, I've moved and I'm just by, by a little lake and just the other side, there's horses everywhere. So I can get over and see the horses. And uh, part of the reason, I, I checked my dogs with horses and they were rubbish. Mm. Uh, dogs don't like the horses and the horses didn't like the dogs. And I thought, oh, it's going to be another distraction, more time away. Mm. So now I'm going to have, to have to work it between a horse and the dogs. But the idea was just to get everyone get out on the field and we'd all be together. But mm. it, them, yeah, they, they're, they're terriers mm. and they just don't like it. So didn't happen. Tony, I'd best let you go. You've got a job to do. Yeah, job to do, of course. Good luck. Thanks Thank you very so much. much indeed for your time. It's Appreciate it. It's a pleasure having you on my show. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And if you'd like to know more about Tony and his work, log on to www.tonystockwell.com. Thanks, Tony. No problem at all. Thank you.